Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Making It Fun. I'm your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I am so excited to see you just kind of right through the other side of that camera because I know you're there. And seasonal sewing is upon us, and today we're gonna do some seriously spooky stuff. I know, I know, enough alliteration, but I love that kind of thing. And I had a whole other project planned for today. I was gonna do a goodie bag, you know, like a trick or treat bag, a big one, because I like a lot of candy. Gets me all hyped up, jacked up, like I need any more of that, right? But when I came home yesterday, I was out. My son's in a band. We were listening to the show. It was a fantastic day. And when I came home, my wife and my daughter had decorated for fall and Halloween specifically. And I was really excited because I was reminded of these awesome, these are called I Love My Mummy Pillows, and they're created by Amy Berrickman from Indigo Junction. She has an entire mummy, a full-size mummy that I'm still dying to make one day, but I just saw these and I thought, hey, we've got to do this together because the supply we're going to use today is Glow in the Dark Fairy Frost. I'm super excited about it. I've been playing with some experimenting ideas. I haven't even started the project. I thought we could just do it together because it is so simple. So while I'm getting the video up and rolling, we are certainly going to do our prizes at the end of the show. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I gave away some small pieces of Strata. This is a, a beautiful collection of, of textured fabrics, Michael Miller Strata line it's called. And these are several of the different colorways. And it shipped in September. This is a beautiful fat quarter bundle that I have for one of you. So we'll get to the uh, mystery question at the end of the show today. Um, like I said, I have one also for the quilt shop and I'm super excited. I know it's not quite within the theme of today. I didn't have any Halloween or spooky fabric to give away. So to be scary, I also thought at the end of the show, I'll give away one of the, <laughs> yes, it's a play on words, the men behind the quilts calendar. And the reason it's so scary is I am Mr. December and it's almost time for December. So you're getting ready for an out of date calendar. So that'll be another great prize if you stick with me long enough today. I want to do some show and tell because you know the reason we're doing Making It Fun is to encourage all of you to frequent your local quilt shops. Make sure you go into those local quilt shops. Spend a little money, but spend a lot of love. Go in there and encourage those shop owners and those designers and those creators that are in there. They work so hard to provide a safe place for you to all be creative and just, you know, and every shop is so unique. It's one of the things I've started doing. I'm filming these really fun quilt shop tour videos. I'm traveling a lot. One of the questions I had a few weeks ago was, what is my real pace? What is my real strategy here at making it fun? Well, I don't have one. When I'm home, I'm going to try to do these project-based videos. And when I'm on the road, I'm capturing as many different fantastic quilt shops as I can. And it's kind of renegade style. I just want you to get the look when you walk through the door of the quilt shop, meet the owner, meet the people involved, meet some of the customers, and I am having a blast. And I just really want to say thank you very much. I've had an incredible amount of positive feedback on those videos. I hear you. Thank you. I will continue to do those. But I also hear from some of you, you like the project. So like I said, we're going to do the simple pillow here, the mummy pillow in just a second. I want to show you some of the fabric that is just shipping to those fabulous local quilt shops right now. It is called Living in the Wild, and I am super excited about this fabric line. I think it's terrific. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is on the paper. Um, it's one of the ways that we as fabric salesmen like to present a lot of our lines. We can see a whole collection all at once. It's really fun that way, but it might be being kind of weird in the lighting in the studio. So I'm gonna show it like this for a second, and then I'm just gonna hold it up so you can see it. And what it really reminds me is those silly fun characters um, from some of the, uh, Madagascar, that's the movie I was trying to think of. And I don't even know if I can say it here, but I just did. So edit it out if I have to later on, whatever. But anyways, it's those wonderful fun little characters but one of the things I'm super excited about in here are these awesome textures right here. It's a 60 degree triangle. I've got some 60 degree quilts I'm working on right now and I'm going to use this for the backing. We also have some of these fabrics available in Minky. So this is really, really a fun, fun fabric line. We have two different colorways. So that's kind of the earth colorway. Here's kind of our light blue minty kind of colorway. And again, I'm hoping that's translating okay uh, from the beautiful high gloss paper to the cameras because I've got lights all over this place to make it look radical inside so that when we do our projects, you can see what's going on. I bet you're ready to get into the project, aren't you? I am. 
probably spent enough time on this kind of stuff. But again, I love showing you what the quilt shops are just now getting. So these are shipping at the beginning of October. This video is coming out at the beginning of October. Go on in, ask for Living in the Wild from Michael Miller, one of the two different colorways. Super fun, flat cottons, some minky coming down the road. Awesome. All right, let's dive into the project. Like I said, the I Love My Mummy pillow, it is awesome. The pattern is incredible and it will do the whole body size, the entire mummy. We're gonna focus on the head today. I'm gonna do basically what will make a 12 inch pillow. Of course, if you're good at math and quilting and sewing, you can modify this as you want, but I'm gonna encourage you to buy one of the Indigo Junction patterns in your local quilt shop because that just keeps everything going. I said we're using the Fairy Frost Glow in the Dark, and I have been standing in the closet with the lights off and all of these wonderful cameras and in many different ways as I can to show you that it really glows in the dark, but I don't really have any fantastic images yet. So you're gonna have to trust me that this beautiful, what looks to be white fabric glows in the dark with that awesome kind of broken ice texture of the Fairy Frost. Now, the original mummy pillows were made out of a canvas. So what I wanted to do, and I just finished, they've just gotten dried, and I think you can tell just a little bit, but I've gone ahead and I've coffee dyed or tea dyed my glow in the dark fairy frost, and I have tested it, and it definitely still glows in the dark. So that was the exciting thing, but I wanted it to look old and creepy like a mummy, right? So that's what we're doing here. These were strips that were cut at basically two and a half inches, and they're torn to give that raw, that raw rough edge. So as we're diving into the tutorial, let's actually start by creating the eyes you see on the mummy first because we're gonna to need to mount those to the pillow face before we can wrap our decaying friend there. Okay, so with that said, what I've done is I've gone through the button jar. Everyone's got a button jar. Mine's a, actually a Tupperware. Uh, Anyway, so I've gone through the button jar and I'm gonna choose these fun pink size, those little bit larger buttons. So what I now wanna do, just like you see here, I have pre-fused the back of the Glow in the Dark Fairy Frost and this one has not been tea dyed, so it's gonna be the bright white, okay? And so the white, I want to be just a little bit larger than the pink buttons. And you can see I'm gonna be incredibly accurate how I do this, uh, something like this. Remember, they're gonna be creepy. And in order to get that size, I'm going to really work hard here. I'm gonna fold that in half. <laughs> Just grab some fun scissors. You know, they don't actually have to be fun scissors. At this point, they can just be working scissors. Not everything has to be fun. But if you can make life more fun, I am finding all the more enjoyable. Okay, so I have two roughly the same size circles and they still have the paper on the back if I didn't mention that just to make life a little bit easier while sewing and cutting. Life easier while cutting. Those are the words I'm really looking for. So I'm just kind of building my eyes there. The next thing I need to know, and I have fused the back of my jet black here from Michael Miller also, and I want that to be even bigger than my white circle. So let's go ahead and get that real accurate. That looks like about the right size. Now, of course, the pattern has the right size eye pieces in there, but one of the things I try to do here at the show is show you how to be creative on your own, but encourage you if you want the real details, or if you're a pattern kind of person, to please follow the patterns along. Okay. So I have made the black and the white of what are gonna be the background of the eyes. So now the front of the pillow itself on this piece, cause I'm making a 12 inch pillow, it's a 12 and a half inch square. It's 12 and a half by 12 and a half if you don't understand the term square. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just peel off my heat and bond feather light which is the fusible web I love so much. Oh, you know what? Heat and Bond has just sent me some wonderful packages of the Featherlight, so I will throw that in the prize as well. So not only will you get the spooky calendar of the men behind the quilts with Rob posing in it, but you will also get Heat and Bond and you will get the wonderful Strata fabric. And no, you don't get any of my glow in the dark fairy frost. Stop asking, it's mine. Okay. I'm just setting my eyes exactly where they go, somewhere in the upper third of the face. Now, 
When I'm setting my eyes in, I'm kind of setting them off set. And the other thing I'll point out is please make sure when you're putting the heat and bond feather light on the back of the glow in the dark fairy frost, you're actually putting it on the back of the glow in the dark fairy frost because it's the printing that glows, not all of the fabric. So you get that cracked ice glow and we want you to be able to see that. I love the way the eyes are positioned. They're a little offset. They're a little different, which makes it even the more creepy. And I am now pressing with my hot but dry iron and lifting about three seconds. And those, both of those layers are totally set and dialed in. But what I want to do now, and it's not really a requirement, but you, want, you, you should, just let me tell you it's advised. We're going to stitch around these. So I have the machine set up right over here for free motion. And I'm just going to start, I have black thread in the machine already. And so I'm just going to start with the black thread. I'm going to start in the middle of one of the white little circles here. We're going to single stitch, bring up the bobbin thread. Now I'm just going to lock that in, stitch, stitch, stitch. And I'm just going to do my best to free motion along that. And I'm just securing. Locking it back in. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring the needle up. Let's go ahead and move on to the outside of the black. Single stitch, bring up your bobbin thread. Set it in place. And again, you're just doing your best to secure it. The mummy's going to look a little old and creepy because of the torn edges on the strips of fabric too. So you don't have to be accurate, accurate with this. Please do not give yourself a grade on this work <laughs> or me for that matter. Okay, let's hit the thread cutter on that moment. Because you can also do that on something like this. It isn't really a washable project. Uh, I prefer to always bring my threads to the top when machine quilting on regular uh, washable projects. But on anything like this, it's really never going to go in the wash. We're going to be just fine to simply use our thread cutter. Starts and stops. Once the second one's done, we've got some strips to cut. So make sure you don't have anything laying around on your cutting mat, like those buttons I was throwing around or your scissors or your pen or anything like that, right? Because what I did do earlier is I cut and tore. Oh, and maybe you've never seen that. Let me show you that trick. I'll just use one of these scrap pieces. Make sure it's a scrap. Yeah, so what you wanna do is you wanna take, and I've just got a small piece here, but if you're making these torn strips, what we want is we want that raw rough edge, right? So we're going to cut roughly two inch strips and then just grab them and you tear out the fabric and then just let this edge just be kind of unsightly. So the next one is going to have two edges, which is great. And just let those threads hang about and oh, it's so fun. You just tear and tear and tear all day long. So that's how the strips were made, but I did it 45 inches long as you can see here. Because I'm using a 12 inch pillow, I want to do roughly 15 inch cuts so I can lay them slightly diagonal. So basically what I'm doing right now, and I've taken the time to make sure after I tea dyed them, I gave them a little bit of an ironing, but I, I wanted the wrinkles to stay in. And then I've also stacked them to make sure that the glow in the dark is facing up. That's really important right now. That glow in the dark is really fun for this. So we want that. I'm eyeballing a 15 inch cut. And I'm gonna make a little smaller 15 inch cut so that I've got a little bit leftovers in there. We're gonna catch those on the sides there. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to start to build. You're gonna want nine, 10 or so of these pieces. I've got a bunch. 
we're just gonna build our mummy. And what I want you to do is just keep these glow-in-the-dark strips right sides up. And I like to start with my kind of face. I mean, around the eyes, of course, it's all kind of the face, but you can kind of see I'm, I'm actually kind of building in what feels like a face, but I'm also laying some of these strips on the diagonal. You are gonna to wanna to cover up all of your background as much as possible, ex except for where the eyes are, right? And I'm gonna leave a little kind of bl bright hole kind of almost in the middle like that. That's kind of fun. And then you can kind of arrange them as you like. Like that. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna base these strips right on to the front side of this. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. I'm gonna encourage you to throw a couple of pins on the inside slightly of where your seam allowance is gonna be just to kind of hold these. And you can see I'm getting three or four strips at a time as I'm pinning through. And then we're gonna sew on the bottom. And the top as well. So watch those seams everywhere we go. And we are still set up for free motion. So we're doing all of this next sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance or even lighter because we're basting this on. So let's take a moment and switch out our machine, which is gonna be real easy. I'm putting my feed dogs back up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the free motion foot. Put on my standard piecing foot. I have a white bobbin I've already loaded. It's actually kind of a neutral or a gray. I don't want you to think I'm all that colorblind. <laughs> Batty, yes. Colorblind, no. Creepy, sometimes. You never know. We are still doing Halloween sewing today. Machines re-threaded. That's right, we're just gonna sew right on top. We're just using all of our wonderful fabric as the guide. We're gonna stitch right on the edge with just a nice easy basting stitch. Using my fingers to kind of make sure that my strips stay where they belong and aren't getting too many wrinkles or folds in them. But character counts. Okay, and once you've gone around all four sides, let's take a moment, uh, pull out our, safe, or our straight pins here that we were using to keep it all basted in place. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and just trim down all of this excess fabric I see. I got a sneaker pin hanging out in there. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> so we wanna trim down this excess fabric and you certainly could do it uh, with just the rotary cutter, but we're gonna use the ruler also because the ruler not only creates a beautiful straight line, but does keep that left hand safe or that other hand. Excuse me, I didn't mean to be so right-handed about things today. Although most sewing uh, things are set up for you right-handers, even though I'm a right-hander, I'm gonna pretend like I'm not. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's just keep trimming, Rob. Let's just keep trimming that. Again, using the ruler to protect my hand, trimming this back down to our 12 and a half inch square. And now all we have to do is make the backs, the little slip sleeve style back, it's super easy. And I had pre-cut those fabrics as well. And those are set up at eight and a half by our um, 12 and a half. And I just wanna confirm and make sure that I've got everything as I need, meaning that I have my fairy frost that is glow in the dark with my print side 
still facing out. I'm going to take a moment and just do an easy little double fold. So I'm just folding once with my thumb and finger and a second time with my thumb and finger, about three or four or five inches worth up here. And then as I bring it over to the needle of the machine, I'm going to go ahead and set this. We're making a finished edge right now for the closure. We're going to make this on both sides. So I'm going across that 12 and a half inch side. And I like to double fold so we never have any raw. And I'm just basically what we call top stitching. So I do have white thread in top and bottom. Top and bobbin, here it however you want. So I've done that once and I'm just gonna do it a second time. Okay, and then I have that second back panel made. So thinking about this, we're gonna do right sides together. <laughs> Once I finished trimming that part I missed, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're going right sides together, right sides together this way, right sides together this way. See how they overlap? That's gonna be that little envelope style. Okay, and let's just take a couple of our pins. I like to go across the corners, the overlap. And because we're making the sleeve this way, we're gonna go 360 degrees around this square. Ha, geometry joke for all of you math buffs out there. So just start in the top corner. I'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance. If you want to go a little bit larger, you can. Just make sure you're catching all of your edges in here. And I'm going to sew all the way off the corner. Oops, I want to leave my needle in the down position. Rotate. I think I get a nicer corner this way and then restart. Off the edge. Back around. This time as I'm coming up, I'm heading uphill on that. So I'm gonna hold it with my finger. Last edge. Back stitch at the end, cut your threads, pull your pins out. Let's go ahead and take a moment and dog ear these corners a little bit. like yay, and then we're just gonna grab it and turn it back to what will now be right sides out forever. And of course, I need to go back in and hand stitch on those little eye buttons. And the instructions actually say you ought to do that first, but it's easy enough to hand sew on the buttons themselves with it in this format. And I obviously didn't wanna take the time or let you see my hand skills. Some people consider hand a four letter word, you know. And there he is. One radical little mummy pillow. And you can see, ooh, that's neat. You can see the differences between the tea dyed and the non tea dyed fabrics. And oh man, that's gonna be so great. I'm dying to go ahead and get in here and take one of my little pillow forms and stuff it up. But I bet you're dying to hear 
what the mystery question is this week so that you can get your name in the kitty and win a prize. Yeah, I just told you the rules right there. Let's go back over it though one more time for those of you who were still in awe of the mummy pillow, right? So as we decided, today's prize is going to be one of these beautiful bundles of my beautiful Michael Miller Strata fabric for you. These are fat quarters. I'll send one to the quilt shop of your choice. So yes, while answering the mystery question, you are welcome to list the favorite quilt shop in your area. Great. We all want to know what quilt shops we should be visiting. Uh, but secondly, I will email you if you are the winner. The videos come out on Wednesday. The winners are announced on Fridays. It's super fun that way. I also said we have a calendar. So when I was helping in Sisters, Oregon a few years ago for a big fundraiser, they do this every couple of years. They call it the Men Behind the Quilts calendar. And so I donated a quilt and they asked me if I would hold the quilt. Do you, do you want to see the picture? Maybe? Should I show you the picture? It's a good picture. I mean, I, I, it's a good picture. So at any rate, there's that and it's almost expired. So that'll make a fun, creepy prize for our thing. And then I'll throw in some of that heat and bond that I don't even have standing right here. But I do know that heat and bond Thermoweb was awesome enough to send me a whole box of stuff to share with all of you. So I'm going to send that out to all of you. I'll send some of the quilt shop as well. Here's the mystery box of questions. I'm going to read the question. Please answer in the comments below this video. We'll make sure they're mixed up good. I have been, by request, pulling out the questions we've already read. So we're getting lower and lower on mystery questions. Let's just kind of fumble through these a little bit. Where are we at today? Okay, here it is. In case, so you know I didn't cheat. Oh, it's upside down. I think it's upside down. Ooh, this is fun. I like this one. Dun, da, da, da. Drum roll, please. Describe your current bucket list project. That's right. In the comments below on today's video, I want to hear from you. What is the current bucket list project? What is that project you are dying to do? We want to hear about it. We want to know what your favorite quilt shop is in your area. And we're all so excited that we were here together today. If nothing else, we were certainly making it fun. Adios, amigos. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.